Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please. We have such a full crowd, I know it's uh, hard to settle down, but um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to you all. My name is Judy Shelton, I'm chairman of the National Endowment for Democracy, and I want to thank you so much for joining with us today as we acknowledge and pay tribute to the courage and conviction of five outstanding individuals. The five people we are here to honor have dedicated their lives to combating corruption, quite literally, because they have put their own well-being and their very lives at stake for the purpose of creating a better future for their countries. Our awardees are from Angola, Ukraine, Afghanistan, Malaysia, and Guatemala. Their unique stories of personal bravery and integrity are inspiring and humbling. They have endured legal challenges, physical threats, and in the case of Khalil Parsa, an assassination attempt, all in an effort to halt their work uncovering government corruption. One awardee, Judge Claudia Escobar, was forced to leave Guatemala with her family when she became the lead whistleblower in a corruption case that revealed illegal interference in Guatemala's judiciary by high-ranking political officials. Why have these honorees been willing to take such personal risks and incur the dangerous retributions all of them understand that corruption at any level undermines the faith of citizens in transparency, in honest governance, and the rule of law. That in turn undermines political stability and genuine progress toward democracy and self-determination. They want something better for their people. That's why they are fighting corruption. And the National Endowment for Democracy applauds and supports such efforts being undertaken by civil society groups around the globe because it reinforces for us what it means to have representative government, to have freedom, democracy, opportunity, and fairness, to stand up for rights and not live in fear. You know, tomorrow will mark the 35th anniversary of a speech made by President Ronald Reagan to members of the British Parliament at Westminster. In that speech, Reagan talked about the dangers of allowing dictators to underestimate the will of the people to fight back. What kind of people do we think we are, he asked. And then he answered, free people, worthy of freedom and determined not only to remain so, but to help others gain their freedom as well. Reagan believed in actively promoting the growth of freedom and democratic ideals throughout the world. His speech gave birth to the National Endowment for Democracy, and we continue to find great meaning in his words and his clear-eyed dedication to our core mission. We must be staunch in our conviction that freedom is not the sole prerogative of a lucky few, but the inalienable and universal right of all human beings. That is what Reagan declared. That is what we take as our guiding spirit and as an expression of the will of the American people. For more than three decades, the NED has remained steadfastly committed to bipartisanship, as it helps to empower others to build the infrastructure of democracy through free elections and free markets, to establish the institutions of a free society that make it possible for people to choose their own way, to develop their own culture, to reconcile their own differences through peaceful means. It's an honor and a privilege to be chairman of the National Endowment for Democracy 
and I couldn't be more proud or more grateful to be standing here in the presence of these five valiant individuals as they are about to be presented with the 2017 Democracy Award. We celebrate and commend each of you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's a very special honor to introduce a great friend of the National Endowment for Democracy, a great personal friend, someone I have long admired and respected. We are thrilled that the Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, Paul Ryan, has taken time to be with us this evening, to join with us in recognizing these five recipients of the Democracy Award. And it's especially meaningful because we are also celebrating the 35th anniversary of President Reagan's speech at Westminster. As Speaker Ryan knows so well, Reagan believed that American values of human equality and liberty should be shared, that they belong to everyone, not just the lucky few. I might say that Congressman Jack Kemp, a mentor and a dear friend to both of us, affirmed this view very poignantly when he stood at Gettysburg, the site of our nation's decisive Civil War battle, and said, the Battle of Gettysburg confirmed that freedom is not just the God-given birthright of Americans, but the ultimate destiny of men and women everywhere. Paul, your own speech in London this past April echoed those themes by calling on people to reassert their right of self-determination. You urged us, and I'm quoting you, to draw on the characters of our peoples and the pillars of our societies, freedom, democracy, and enterprise. It is with great pleasure that I invite our speaker to offer his remarks. Thank you, Judy. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Judy Shelton and I have been friends for a good 25 years. Uh, and so thank you very much. I also uh, want to make note of some of my colleagues here who are very instrumental in supporting national and dominant democracy. I see Karen Bass is here. Peter Roskam is here. Mario diaz Ballard is here. So thank you very much for what, what you do as well. Look, uh, I also want to thank Carl uh, Gershman um, and the incredible NED team, the National Endowment Democracy team, for making this all very possible. I want to extend my congratulations to the five honorees tonight. We are so humbled to have you here at our Capitol, which we consider to be the world's greatest symbol of democracy. So much of this building is dedicated to honoring the origins of democracy, but you, you are on the front lines of this fight every day. You're living it out. Mr. Parsa, you are not even nine months removed from an attempt on your life. Following it, you said, quote, the attempt on my life did not stop me. My team and I continue to combat corruption, even if it is tough. Tough? He got shot nine times. <laughs> Talk about tough. We are just in awe of this dedication that you presented, that you're showing. So please take our profound thanks and respect. It is this kind of dedication and bravery that brings us all here tonight. Of course, as Judy said, all of this goes back to that speech President Reagan gave at Westminster 35 years ago tomorrow. You know, we look at that speech as iconic. We all hearken back to it. It was not really all that well received at the time. The biggest headline actually was that members of parliament had never seen a teleprompter before. <laughs> the reason some of the experts did not connect with it is they just didn't share Reagan's optimism about winning the Cold War and defeating communism. They didn't see it necessarily, but he did see it. And here is the passage of the speech that I found the most compelling. This might sound familiar. <laughs> While we must be cautious about forcing the pace of change, we must not hesitate to declare our ultimate objectives and take concrete actions to move them. We must be staunch in our conviction that freedom is not the sole prerogative of a lucky few, but the inalienable and universal right of all human beings. The reason this sounds familiar is because Judy Shelton just said it a few minutes ago. <laughs> 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 
but it is worth repeating over and over and over again. Think about this for a second. That was not just an observation or a comment on events. It was a call to action. And what Reagan meant is that freedom, although an inalienable and universal right, is not guaranteed. It needs to be fought for and defended for, defended at every term. And America would not just be part of a coalition in that fight, he claimed. America would need to lead that charge. That's the mission that the NED carries out every day on behalf of this nation. But it does so against some very powerful forces. Look at where we are right now. According to Freedom House, 2016 was the 11th straight year of decline in global freedom. This trend should alarm all of us. The rising tide of authoritarianism, corruption, and terror undermines not only our principles, but our security. These forces seek to divide, they seek to destabilize and demoralize us. Because corruption is not just a means to gain power or influence. It threatens to, to bribe ordinary citizens of their voice and of their belief in each other. And when people lose confidence, that resilience that is so vital to an active citizenry, the whole system comes into question. This is why we cannot separate our values from our policies. This is why we cannot separate our ideals from our interests. We cannot separate moral imperatives from strategic imperatives. They are inextricably linked. If America will not bring people together around freedom, human rights, and the rule of law, who will? And how can we credibly hold these principles up as our heritage if we don't fight for their future? Here in the United States Congress, the heart of our democracy, it is where our values and policies intersect. Every year, no matter what the politics of the day, Republicans and Democrats, you see some right here, Republicans and Democrats work together to reaffirm and to expand these commitments. After all, it was Speaker Tip O'Neill, Reagan's great nemesis on domestic matters, that the National Endowment for Democracy was created. We work together to fund these critical programs to support emerging democracies and these critical civil society organizations. We impose sanctions on human right abusers and their enablers. We expand economic cooperation with our partners across the globe. We rebuild our military so that it can confront the challenges in the 21st century. And we're raising awareness for women's rights in countries like Iraq and Afghanistan. So let me simply close by saying this. The pace of change can be frustratingly slow. Reagan understood this as well as anyone else, better than anyone else. Not everyone will see it around the corner like you do. Not everyone will be as staunch in their convictions as you are. But nothing is more important than speaking up for those who cannot speak for themselves. And this Congress, Republicans and Democrats, this Congress and the people that we represent, we will always have your back. Thank you very much for being here, and congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, the fact that Speaker Ryan would be with us, I think, says says volumes. And um, in, in a spectacularly bipartisan display, it is now my great privilege to call on the House Democratic leader, Nancy Pelosi. Um, let me just introduce you briefly. She is a stalwart defender of human rights and democracy around the world, a champion of civil liberties and fundamental freedoms. House Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi is a woman of vision and compassion a believer in the rights and the dignity of all people wherever they are throughout the world. She is a longtime and very loyal friend of the National Endowment for Democracy, and we are grateful for her presence this evening to honor the NED awardees for 2017. I know what she'll say. She wouldn't miss it. Nancy Pelosi has spoken at prior NET events, recognizing the courage and commitment of democracy activists chosen to receive the annual Democracy Award. And she said this about the beautiful statue itself that will be presented to each recipient. 
with its depiction of the goddess of democracy that once stood in Tiananmen Square. It is a reminder that our work to promote justice and equality around the world continues. She is so right. And now I am pleased to invite this hardworking and dedicated woman to share a few thoughts about our 2017 awardees, the Honorable Nancy Pelosi. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your very generous introduction, for the kind invitation to once, be, uh, once again to be here. I'm here every year. I was even here last year when it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll make up for it. Thank you, Do Dr. Judy Shelton, uh, Ned Chairman, for your leadership, for your kind words. Carl Gershman, he's a force of nature. He, he just, I don't know, he just persists. And that's a wonderful thing. And that's a wonderful thing. I'm honored to be here with my colleague, my former colleague, Martin Frost, a champion for human rights throughout the world. It's always an honor to be with you. Martin, and what an honor to be here and share the podium with our speaker, Speaker Ryan, as a reflection of the support that uh, you have, that National Endowment for Democracy has uh, in the Congress of the United States on both sides of the aisle and on both sides of the Capitol. Again, it's a privilege to be here and to congratulate our, 207, our 217 Democracy Awardees, Dennis Bihas, Cynthia Gabriel, Cahil Parsa, Rafael Marquez, and Claudia Escobar, and her beautiful little, and the little girl. So sweet, <laughs> so sweet. As the speaker was referencing Ronald Reagan, I was thinking, well, we're on the same page. 35 years ago today, President Ronald Reagan spoke at Westminster and urged Democratic people to remember that freedom is not the sole prerogative of a lucky few, but the inalienable and universal right of all human beings. In that speech, President Reagan called for a new initiative to support the march of human rights and democracy, one that would lead the world to a freer 21st century. That call was answered the following year when Congress created the National Endowment for Democracy. Ned recognizes that democracy is the birthright of every person in every nation. That's why Ned works across the globe advancing democracy in 90 countries on six continents. You foster free and fair elections in Eastern Europe after the Berlin Wall was torn down. You supported reformers in the Middle East and North Africa as they cast off oppressive regimes. You defended human rights activists in China. Last week was the 28th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square Massacre. We must all reaffirm our support for the journalists, human rights activists, and free thinkers unjustly jailed in China today. And of course, the goddess of democracy is a depiction of that great courageous demonstration in Tiananmen Square 28 years ago. We have this goddess in San Francisco, as you know. So the fact that this is the award is something so very, very special because it was modeled after, after our own a Statue of Liberty in certain respects, and it is reflection of the deeply embedded inalienable rights that President Reagan talked about and being awarded to these champions. Thank you for your courage uh, for fighting. For more than 30 years, again, Ned has empowered courageous people to chart the course of their country's futures. Tonight, we honor five men and women who exemplify that mission. These heroes have shown exceptional courage in wiping out the scourge of corruption and defending their democracies. This is very, very important. Corruption destroys the very fabric of our societies. It destroys, it erodes trust, steals from hardworking citizens, and stifles economic growth. Corruption creates a vacuum that criminals and terrorists can exploit, and it robs young people of their optimism and hope for a better future. That's why these remarkable wardies are being so recognized. They faced harassment, jail, and even attempts on their lives, all to build a more honest and accountable democracies. I just tell you this little story before I proceed. I was in, uh, I got, we used to go to uh, uh, Afghanistan and Iraq on Mother's Day weekend all the time. And um, one of those, now mostly Afghanistan, but on, to visit our troops, the moms and the grandmothers who were serving, 
and the rest. And usually it was a women's delegation. And one time we went and we, we had the privilege then of going into the hinterlands because we would go to Kabul and see all of these accomplished women and that was wonderful. But we also wanted to go meet women where they lived uh, and see about their challenges. So we went, flew there, helicopter to the next place, by land, press. I mean, it was a very tough, arduous, arduous trip. And we got there, it was all women that we were meeting with, and they uh, said, had told the governor who greeted us with children and flowers, no men allowed in the meeting. So <laughs> we went in the meeting, and the, uh, the array of women who were there were, uh, I would say, the... Uh, Midwife was sort of the highest ranking woman there and went across the board to all kinds of women down to women who were beggars, except now one of them got a job at USAID separating raisins from twigs. And I tell you that because it's a very humble place and they told us about health care and education for their daughters and all this or that. And then we got toward the end, one of them said to our delegation of women members, you want us to send our daughters to school, and you want our daughters to go to the health clinic and this or that, but it's in order for our daughters to leave home, we have to have security. We all recognize that. But now, these very humble women, humble women one of them a beggar until last year, said, but we can't have security in our country until we end corruption. Imagine that the wisdom, the wisdom coming from these women, and they all subscribed to that. So I said, I'm going to tell President Karzai what you had to say, which I did. But it, it, people know you, a country cannot reach its full fulfillment. People cannot reach their full uh, fulfillment if corruption it is the, uh, the blocks all of that. It takes so much courage to fight corruption because there's so much money involved. So I'm so glad that you are focusing on these five braid individuals who are selling braiding this evening. And all have been activists that Ned supports, have achieved so much. But democracy and freedom still remain a dream for far too many people across the world. Tonight, let us celebrate the courage and the vision of those fighting to make their societies more open, more free, more representative, and more honest. Let us pledge to never relent in the fight for progress in this area. It is a long fight. My colleague Tom Lantos, for whom the Tom Lantos Human Rights Commission is named, and Jim McGovern chairs, Karen Bass has been involved in many of their hearings. Oh, and Ed Royce is here, our chairman. Mr. Chairman, what an honor to see you. Thank you. Slipped in there. He's been a champion. He gave me my instructions. We just went on a trip to, went to India, to Nepal. We visited His Holiness the Dalai Lama when we were in India. We went to Germany, went to visit our, as a bipartisan delegation, our friends in NATO and the EU and all the rest. And every place, the business community came out and greeted us and this and this. And every step along the way, uh, we talked about human rights, whether we're talking to the business community, whether we're talking about the defense uh, ministers or whatever it was, we all kept saying you have to incorporate human rights in what you are doing. Jim McGovern uh, particularly was saying all of that. And the chairman gave us his, uh, his concern for untouchables in India, which we conveyed uh, to, uh, to the prime minister of India. And your concerns were well known to him, <laughs> even in advance. So thank you for your leadership, Mr. Chairman. What an honor to be here with you. So again, we have to keep making the point. It's not, you know, we respect what everyone is doing. We uh, appreciate the particular responsibilities they have, but we have to weave this human rights component uh, into everything that we do. That's what NED, National Endowment for Democracy, enables us to do. So let us uh, remember that there is nothing partisan about upholding human rights, dignity, and universal values. Tonight is an opportunity to reaffirm our bipartisan commitment to supporting democracy across the globe. And I call on all of my colleagues and both parties to join together as we congratulate the 217th 
Democracy Awardees, and thank you for all of your work. Thank you to Emily. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very, very kind. Thank you so much for such uh, expansive and, and warm comments. It's, it's evident what a, a personal and deep connection you have to the cause of democracy and human rights. That was, that was just profound. Thank you. Um, you know, I can't help but think of something that was once said by Michael Novak, who was a much cherished member of the NED board with regard to democracy. Michael cared deeply about liberty and the institutions required to preserve and perpetuate it. He made it an observation that is an acknowledgment of the frictions and political tensions that necessarily arise as part of the system ordained by our Constitution that guarantees rights while maintaining a separation of powers. Checks and balances ensure that none of the three separate branches of government can overstep their authority at least not for long. Michael said, quote, our political institutions work remarkably well. They are designed to clang against each other. The noise is democracy at work. So even if the governing process sometimes seems not only noisy, but even a bit chaotic at times, that's a good thing. It's a beautiful thing, a precious thing. It's democracy at work. And I meant to offer that caveat as a forewarning <laughs> that our ceremony might not go so smoothly and predictably today <laughs> because we know our members of Congress have very demanding and minute-to-minute -minute schedules. Um, but the fact that they are here with us um, means it's not only orderly, but I think all the more meaningful and just let me underscore our gratitude as we begin the actual portion of our program when we make the individual awards to our honorees. It is my great pleasure to introduce the Honorable Ed Royce, Chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Chairman Royce is a powerful and effective proponent of democracy as a bedrock foundational principle of America's approach to the world not only because it affirms our highest ideals, but because it also advances our most important interests. Sharing the benefits of democracy is part of our moral and strategic vision. And it's my deep privilege to invite Chairman Ed Royce to present the Democracy Award to Denis Bihus of Ukraine. Thank you, thank you. Uh, let me, let me join, if I could, Nancy Pelosi in her remarks before I do that uh, to Carl Gershwin, to Carl for his incredible commitment that goes back uh, to a point in time when I think many of us wondered if those in the East Bloc would ever experience freedom. And had it not been for your leadership, Carl, which, and, and your continued advice and inspiration that you provide. Uh, there are many people who would have given up on the idea that human rights is something that every society should, uh, should enjoy, that the most vulnerable deserve that protection, which Nancy Pelosi spoke to. And I just want to say personally, uh, I know of your contributions through the years and uh, your leadership in this area, and the, the uh, the young man to my right probably uh, would not be here today without those voices because uh, I know the consequences in Moscow of uh, four of his colleagues who each were shot in turn. This is just with one newspaper, just with respect to one investigative paper. Four lost their lives, each in succession. And yet they continued to push and push and push out this message. But without our support in Ukraine, and I had the opportunity, uh, whether it was in Kyiv or going east to Dnipropetrovsk, I saw the reaction to the work that you and your volunteers are doing to, to take corruption and put it right there on the television 
in front of people so that they could see exactly what he was talking about in terms of public officials. And if there is a greater antidote, if there's a greater disincentive to public corruption than what you have been able to do with Nashi Groshi, with, with our money, I, don't, I can't imagine what it would be. But imagine for a minute the courage that it takes for a young man like this, for Dennis, to go out in a society in which we know how much people will do to protect their ill-gotten gains, don't we? We've seen that in life. So an individual like this, who coordinates the activities of thousands of volunteers towards this goal, um, I just believe that if we're going to change the world, we have to support those who have the courage and who know and can explain that left unchecked, corru it is corruption that undermines the public trust in government, that undermines their trust in the private sector, and even their trust in their fellow citizens. And it is that that he wrestles with. And I, um, I think that the years of hard work that he's applied to this, the years of risk that he and his colleagues have taken in order to take down these powerful individuals and have them face justice, um, I think that you are the right recipient, one of the right recipients. And so to, today it is a great honor for me uh, to present this to a very fearless individual. So I just uh, say to Dennis Bihos, thank you for your courage and showing the way for so many journalists around the world. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll give you the stick. Hello. Uh, thank you very much. Um, it's a great honor for me to win this award. I understand that um, I'm to give a small thank you speech, but I'd like to start by saying what it is most important. That is not my award. Everything that I've done, everything that has produced some results was the work of a hard working collective. This award goes to my team to the people who work every day with the worst aspects of Ukrainian politics and business. They do it in a order to shine a light on what other want hidden in the shadow. This award goes to the thousands of volunteers who believed in the idea of change and unity. These people, many whose names I do not know, gave the most valuable thing they have, their time. This award is for the millions of Ukrainians who don't just hope for a better life, but change their country with their own deeds. They affirm that our work is not in vain. It's especially important to dedicate this award to my family, who see me less often than anybody mentioned it above. <laughs> Thank you for your love and passion. And lastly, a few words about democracy. It's not just about choice. It's about responsibility. Throughout Ukrainian history, we have often forgotten that the most difficult things in life are working hard and taking responsibility for our own fate. I believe that we will not repeat this mistake again. Uh, thank you one more time. <laughs> And now let me call on a tried and true supporter of the NED, a man who stands in solidarity with people everywhere who suffer under oppressive regimes, 
a man who walks with the heroes of freedom as they struggle to try achieve the triumph of democracy over tyranny. Congressman Mario diaz Balart, please come up here now to present the 2017 Democracy Award to Khalil Parsa of Afghanistan. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you for your leadership. I would be remiss if I did not also mention Carl. Uh, you know, when others might get tired and frustrated, and he reminds us that the cause does not allow for people to get tired and frustrated. Carl, you never stop. And because of you, frankly, a lot of us are forced to follow, so thank you. <laughs> and to the distinguished board members of NED, thank you for what you do. Look, I've, I have the privilege of, of introducing, frankly, an exceptional man. Uh, I was able to sit down with him yesterday and, and really speak to him and, and learn and hear about his, his story. Uh, and obviously, he is a recipient of NED's 2017 Democracy Award, and that is Khalil Parsa. Mr. Parsa leads an NGO called the Supporting Organization for Afghanistan Civil Society. Through this NGO, Mr. Parsa promotes transparency and accountability and works to end corruption in his region of Afghanistan. And sometimes, by the way, that has resulted in the imprisonment of unjust and corrupt officials. So you can imagine the pressure that he's in. His organization establishes things like hotlines and, and even complaint boxes in neighborhoods so that individuals can, can talk and speak freely without fear. And for his work, Mr. Parsa, as you've already heard, was nearly killed just last year when two gunmen on motorcycles shot him multiple, multiple times. Mr. Parsa, by the way, as he is here now, has two of those bullets still within his body. Mr. Parsa's organization is one of, the, one of the hundreds of organizations in more than 90 countries, which, 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 which NED, which the National Endowment for Democracy, has and continues to work with. You know, today we, as you've heard, we commend the heroes, such as Mr. Parsa. 35 years since President Reagan's delivered that famous Westminster address to the British Parliament. And in his address, President Reagan outlined his plan to vanquish tyranny. And, and despite all those who said he was crazy, it couldn't be done. You know, in Eastern Europe and elsewhere, his plan was actually successful. President Reagan saw, and as Speaker Ryan said, he saw then what really few others did at the time, that fostering what he called the infrastructure of democracy through a free press and independent labor and political parties and government transparency and a voice in one's government, that those were essential in the elimination and the ending of tyranny. And as, as at President Reagan's initiative and continued in earnest today, this noble work, this essential work continues through NED and in very difficult places, in places like Russia, or Venezuela, or Cuba, or North Korea, or Communist China, and Belarus, anywhere where liberty is under siege, there is NED, working with brave individuals such as these that are here today, such as Mr. Parza, to foster democracy, to foster freedom. So what a privilege it is to be able to give this distinguished human being, this brave human being, and all of us would have understood if he would have just said, enough is enough, I'm going home. But no, he hasn't stopped. Carl, you don't stop, and it is a privilege. It is a privilege and an honor to meet folks like you, and I hope to continue to working with, with individuals like you. Mr. Parza.
اعضای محترم کنگره خانم ها و آقایان عصر شما بخیر در حال حاضر من بسیار غمگینم به خاطر اینکه در چند روز اخیر صدها تن از هموطنان من بر اثر حملات تروریستی که در افغانستان رخ داده جانهای خیش را از دست دادن و زخمی شدن این حملات ناگوار یادآور قربانی دادن هموطنانم در مسیر مبارزه بر علیه تروریسم جهانی است باید یادآور شوم که در پانزده سال گذشته همه افغان ها و شما من حیث شریک استراتژیک که ما در افغانستان به های گذافی را پرداختیم به خاطر حمایت و کمک های سخاوتمندانه شما امروز حدود یک میلیون فرزند افغان به مکتب می روند خدمات صحی در کشور ما بهبود یافته ما یک نظام دموکراتیک داریم که مردم از طریق رأی مستقیم نمایندگان خود تعیین می کنند ما جامعه مدنی پویا و رسانه های فعالی داریم که در همه همه روزه برای نهادی نشدن دموکراسی حاکمیت قانون و بهبود حکومتداری خوب تلاش میکنند طوری که میدانید امروز افغانستان با چالش های بسیار زیادی مواجه است به شمول طالبان داعش مافیای فساد اداری و قدرت های مداخلگر منطقوی که در تلاش عقبگرد افغانستان در منطقه هستند ولی اجازه دهید که تا من برایتون بگویم که ما افغان ها نظام مردم سالار بر پایه قانون اساسی مدون را برگزیدیم و به تروریسم و دهشت نگفتیم ما به حکومتداری خوب و حاکمیت قانون باورمند هستیم و به و می خواهیم که رو به پیش حرکت کنیم ما با تعهد به تحقق صلح و عدالت اجتماعی همه روزه تلاش میکنیم فعالین جامعه مدنی و شهروندان ولایت هرات همه روزه برای کاهش فساد اداری و در یک همکاری تنگاتنگ با ما همکاری میکنند و تلاش میورزند برای من جای بسا افتخار است که امروز این تندیس دموکراسی را به نمایندگی از جامعه مدنی افغانستان دریافت میکنم در اخیر از خانواده ام و همکارانم سپاسگزاری میکنم که در این مسیر مرا همیاری و همکاری نمودن و از صندوق ملی دموکراسی کنگرس امریکا و مردم امریکا تقاضامندم تا برای نهادین ساختن نظام مردم سالار و جلوگیری از تبدیل دوباره شدن تبدیل شدن دوباره افغانستان به لانه تروریستان ما را یاری رسانند تشکر Honorable members of the Congress, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. As I stand before you this evening, I grieve the loss of hundreds of my fellow citizens who were brutally killed and maimed during several terrorist attacks in the past few days. These tragic and senseless attacks remind us of, of the heavy cost of global war and terrorism. And we are at the forefront of this global war. May I remind you that during the past 15 years, both Afghans and Americans uh, invested in Afghanistan both in blood and treasure. Because of your generous support, nearly one million children goes to school today. The healthcare system is better now. We have a nascent democracy where the citizens elect their officials. We have a vibrant civil society, including an independent media that fights corruption and making sure that the Afghan government and elected officials remain accountable. We have not been able to achieve, we, we would have not been able to achieve all this 
if it was not for your generous support and assistance, and I would like to thank you for that. As you know, in Afghanistan, there are many challenges, and there are many entities, such as the Taliban, ISIS, criminal networks, and regional spoilers that want Afghanistan to go back. But let me assure you that we, Afghans, have embraced democracy and constitutional order and said no to tyranny and terrorism that is represented by Taliban and their backers alike. We believe in democracy, justice, governance, and rule of law. We want to move forward. We are committed to fight for social justice and peace every day. My platform in my hometown of Herat promotes a culture of zero tolerance for corruption. We mobilize the citizens to work with us to report cases of corruption so we collectively fight for resolve and redress. Finally, I am so honored this evening to receive this Democracy Award on behalf of the civil society of Afghanistan. This award is not only for me, it is for the Afghan civil society and all those activists around the world who fight for justice, the rule of law, and accountability. Last but not the least, I would like to thank my family and my peers to continue to uh, support my efforts. And I would also th uh, like to thank the National Endowment for Democracy, the US Congress, the people of this great nation that support us and our work. I would like to urge and request that you continue supporting us so that Afghanistan's democracy become institutionalized and we do not become a safe haven for terrorist groups once again. Thank you. How inspiring. Um, I am especially honored to present my fellow board member at the National Endowment for Democracy, Congressman Peter Roskam, who plays a prominent role in determining our own nation's domestic affairs as Ways and Means Tax Policy Chairman, and who also leads the House Democracy Partnership, which assists legislatures in emerging democracies. Thank you for being here with us to give the Democracy Award to Cynthia Gabriel of Malaysia. May I present the Honorable Peter Roskam. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I have a quick story to tell, and that's a little bit of a reflection. We've heard a lot about the discussion of Ronald Reagan and his speech to Parliament, and I have a a story about uh, something that I was able to confirm personally, and this is a story that's familiar to many of you, but it's worthy of thinking about in the context of tonight's discussion, and the story of Natan Sharansky. Natan Sharansky, as we know, was one of the Jewish refuseniks who insisted in the Soviet Union of practicing his faith. And he was a voice for democracy there, and that was scandalous for the Soviets. And so what do they do? They put him into a gulag for nine years. And I was able to confirm this because I had a chance to meet him in Israel a few years ago, and he told me this, that when Ronald Reagan gave a speech and he called the Soviet Union an evil empire, as scandalized as the political West was at that time, and how provocative, and how dare an American president do that, when those in the gulag heard that, they were heartened. They knew it was the beginning of the end, and as Sharansky has told the story, even the guards in the gulag knew it was the beginning of the end. Because when people were calling something what it was, it had a profound effect. And so this honoree, Cynthia Gabriel, falls in that tradition. Because here's what she's done. She's a human rights activist at home in Malaysia, and she's turned into an anti-corruption fighter. And she tackles corruption, and she sees it as subverting the rule of law and promoting impunity, which of course it does. And she sees it as a major impediment to democracy. She spent most of her professional life advancing and promoting human rights, good governments, and democratic freedoms. She founded C4, the Center to Combat Corruption and Cronyism. She's a NED grantee, and they promote good governance and encourage public participation in efforts to combat corruption in Malaysia. 
C4 recently, recently launched a new website, Kleptocrazy Malaysia, a whistleblower site to highlight cases of public officials and politicians said to have unusual wealth. The center fills an important void in Malaysian civil society as an independent voice in Malaysia working on corruption issues. She served as the vice president of the Global Advocacy Group International Federation for Human Rights from 2004 to 2009, and we're pleased that Cynthia is with us. This is a brave woman who's standing up to powerful forces in Malaysia to fight corruption, call it what it is, and to promote a more transparent government in Malaysia. Cynthia, it's my honor to present to you the 2017 Democracy Award. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you can all see me. <laughs> okay, this is a real honor. Thank you very much. A real honor, and I'm really humbled to be here before so many anti corruption activists around the globe before human rights defenders and activists, and mostly American civil society. This is indeed an honor, and the room is overfilled with people. It is really a very, very memorable uh, event for me to take back to Malaysia. Now, I want to thank especially the NED for recognizing the work that we do. Now, more than ever, when whistleblowers are being chastised, whistleblowers are being attacked, not just in Malaysia, but everywhere around the world. Now, I have a story to tell, which my representative uh, so generously described just now, but not the difficult things. I was one of those who blew the whistle on the Scorpion corruption scandal. This was a a scandal that actually involved the purchase of uh, battleships from France. Now, we exposed corruption at the highest level because it involved a defense minister and now the prime minister. And what happened was something that I never really thought uh, would happen to me because it was just bizarre that they would come after the whistleblowers and not even bother to go after the complaint and investigate the complaint. So the whistleblowers were chastised, our office was raided, we were pulled to the police station and the uh, registrar over more than 15 times and we were questioned, harassed, the uh, files were taken away from our office and there were threats. Now there was the social media, so threats were coming on Facebook, on Twitter and basically saying watch what you do, we're coming after you and it was really frightening. So one of the people that I really do want to thank are my immediate family members because they were the ones that, despite being so fearful for my life, uh, kept telling me that it was important to carry on. This is not a career. Uh, this is not something that you can just say, enough, it's time to just shrink away and do nothing about it. This was important to just stay the course. It was important to fight the good fight, and it was important to actually seek the truth. So the environment that whistleblowers work in are very hostile. And what I'm just saying in, in very quick two minutes uh, is not just something which is isolated to Malaysia. That Malaysia would be recognized in this award is very special to me and civil society in Malaysia. But this is a problem that exists everywhere. Uh, and the fact that this award is now being given out to anti-corruption activists around the world actually does promote and lift the situation of whistleblowers around the world. And for that, I think I must really say thank you to the National Endowment for Democracy for very strategically placing the importance of reporting corruption and whistleblowers around the world to continue to report so that we ordinary people will be able to be the checks and balances for our society. I also want to reach out to the American people because in this very, very difficult and uncertain times. No one actually imagined that America would be in a situation that you are in today. But the very fact that your own institutions are being tested 
it does mean that we, the people, have to stand to fight for our own institutions, whether in America, in Malaysia, or anywhere else in the world. And it's just us, we ordinary citizens, that will be able to determine what kind of institutions we have for the future, what kind of governments we actually have in the future. So I feel a lot. Uh, the global solidarity is so overwhelming. The fact that the room is so full is so motivating for us to actually continue to do the work that we do. Now, I may go home to a very hostile environment. The environment is very hostile. So I may go home and I may be called a foreign agent, a CIA agent, whatever. But I think I'm prepared for that. I'm ready for that. And I, and I take inspiration from the fact that in the last couple of months, the American civil society have shown how important it is to keep our, our institutions independent. And I do want to thank all of you for sharing this moment with us and for sharing so much the need to actually keep our democracy alive. Because fighting corruption is about promoting democracy. Fighting promotion is about keeping the rule of law. And fighting com corruption is about fighting impunity. So thank you very much. And last but not least, I'd like to thank uh, everyone back home, because it's 6.30 a.m. there at home, 12 hours time difference, and some of them are actually watching it online. So thank you very much. Thank you for the honor and the opportunity to be able to come before you and speak and say uh, thank you very much again for the award. Thank you. Well, that's what you call um, courage and grace. I have so much respect for our next presenter. She is a distinguished member of Congress who serves on the House Committee on Foreign Affairs, where she is ranking member of the subcommittee on Africa, global health, global human rights, and international organizations. The Honorable Karen Bass is also a fellow member of the NED Board of Directors, and it is my great honor and privilege to introduce her now to make the Democracy Award presentation to Rafael Marques from Angola. Please, Congress Member Bass. Well, good evening, everyone. It's uh, my pleasure and honor to be here today with all of you. And I want to, you know, especially thank our board chair and our fearless leader, who has received uh, um, an awful lot of compliments and acknowledgement today for your leadership for so many years. Why don't we just take a minute to give him a round of applause, don't you think? <laughs> I want to congratulate all of the honorees for your courage and for your work. And uh, our previous honoree that mentioned global solidarity, you know, one thing that I think is so important for all of the honorees to remember, and part of the purpose of this award today is to send the message that we stand with you. You mentioned that going home might be, might be a challenge, but I think that one of the things that protects all of you and hopefully embraces all of you is to know that the world is watching and that we will stand with you. I have the distinct honor of introducing the next award, honor, the next honoree, and present him with the Democracy Award. And as we all know, the Democracy Award recognizes the courageous and creative work of individuals and organizations advancing the cause of human rights and democracy around the world. Confronting corruption is often thought of, in hindsight, as the easy choice to make or the destined choice to make. All too often, courage and change are thought of as inevitable. Someone will do it. It's the assumption that something will surely happen in the grand scheme of history's progress. Now, I may agree and say that change is inevitable, because I do believe that, and that change and courage is inevitable. But I realize that we're all here tonight because we all realize that without certain people and without their display of courage, change would be nothing. Without certain people, there is no progress. So born in Luanda, Angola, Mr. Rafael Marques de Moraes holds a Bachelor of Arts in Anthropology from the University of London and a Master's from the University of Oxford. In 2011, he was a Reagan 
Fessel Democracy Fellow at the National Endowment for Democracy. He is a journalist and a human rights defender and founder of the watchdog website Maka Angola, which is dedicated to the struggle against corruption and the defense of democracy in Angola. Mr. De Mores was imprisoned for his work in 1999 after publishing an article titled The Lipstick of Dictatorship <laughs> and, and was released after international advocacy efforts on his behalf. His case was taken up by the UN Human Rights Committee and resulted in a precedent-setting ruling in, two, in 2005. He is currently facing charges for insulting the Attorney General of Angola after publicly exposing how the Attorney General's private business dealings conflict with his public duties. Please join me in applauding his courage and in presenting him with the Democracy <laughs> I have to start by thanking Carl Gershman as well for being so supportive and the NED staff for being friends throughout uh, these years. Um, honorable members of Congress, um, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm truly humbled by this honor awarded here in the US Congress. For years, I have played my part in fighting corruption and exposing human rights abuses. I've worked in isolation, continually under threat, and with few resources other than resolve. It was always such a blessing to come to Washington and be welcomed by friends who offered moral support and practical help. Today, I stand here dreaming that one day my own country might have a Congress that truly represents the people and is answerable to them. Angola's Congress, the National Assembly, is riddled with corruption, yet its members enjoy impunity. One example, just days ago, the Speaker of the Angolan Parliament ordered the buying of 250 luxury cars to be allocated to the incoming members of Parliament who will be elected in August. The total bill is a staggering $78 million, and it comes out of the state budget. Meanwhile, there is no money to supply public hospitals with the most basic, basic medical equipment or medicines. People are dying needlessly every day for want of a syringe or a malaria pill. I'm most grateful for the moral support I've received from the National Endowment for Democracy, from the State Department, and from all my wonderful friends uh, in the United States, many of whom are here today in the audience. And I would ask all of you, whether in the Congress or in government, to do your utmost to help those fighting for transparency, human rights, the rule of law, and democracy in their countries. Less corruption and fewer human rights abuses across the world will reduce the need for development aid, reduce the number of refugees fleeing tyranny in the hope of fighting, finding freedom in Europe and in the United States. There is much to be gained from investing in free and honest societies, not least making our world a better and safer place for all. Thank you very much. We are privileged to have with us today Norma Torres, a member of Congress who serves on the Homeland Security Committee as well as the Committee on Natural Resources. Throughout her career in elected office, she has worked to make government more responsive to the needs of its citizens. The Honorable Norma Torres was born in Guatemala and came to the United States when she was five. It is especially gratifying for her, I'm sure, to personally present the Democracy Award to Claudia Escobar from Guatemala.
Gracias. Thank you um, so much. Um, good evening, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here tonight with all of you. Uh, and thank NED for um, this invitation to present this award. I am so honored um, to introduce to you Judge Claudia Escobar of Guatemala, um, one of tonight's distinguished awardees. And I want to congratulate each and every one of you and highlight the work and the recognition of two women um, that are being recognized today. Thank you, um, ladies, for the work that you do. Um, Judge Escobar is also someone who put her own safety and her family's safety and her career on the line in order to fight back against corruption. When she served on the Guatemala's Court of Appeals, she became a whistleblower in a corrupt case. That was a very high stakes case because it involved a sitting vice president and the former president of Congress. I know that that was not an easy decision for Judge Escobar, and she has paid a very high price, and she and her family were forced to leave Guatemala. However, I strongly believe that her stand against corruption was the right decision. For too long, corruption has held Guatemala back. In recent years, the Guatemalan people have fought hard against corruption, and supporting their efforts has become a centerpiece of US policy in Guatemala. The United States has worked to support reforms and to strengthen those institutions that are essential to combating corruption. The United States has also supported those individuals who are bravely fighting against corruption. Reforms and institutions are important, but it is the brave individuals like Judge Escobar who are on the front lines of the f and fighting against uh, corruption. We must continue to stand with them. To that end, I am happy to say that the House of Representatives recently passed H.R. 145, a resolution that I drafted in support of the fight against corruption in Central America. So today, I am delighted to introduce to you Judge Claudia Escobar and to celebrate her importance and courageous work to fight against corruption and build a better Guatemala for the next generation, for the next Norma Torres, who should have been a Congress member in Guatemala. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Well, good night, good evening. Thank to all of you for being here, backing up our job with your presence. Today, I want to thank the National Endowment for Democracy for giving me this prestigious recognition with a special appreciation for the Regan Fassell Fellow Program that has been a safety net for me in critical moments. It is unusual that our work be recognized in a foreign country. For me, it is a great honor to receive the Democracy Award in the Congress of the United States of America, a country that is an example of the respect of Republican principles and democratic values. But it is a paradox to receive it from the hands of Norma Torres, a great representative that was born in Guatemala and had to leave when she was a little girl, like my own daughter. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Due to a political situation in our land. Additionally, to receive this when the former head of Congress in my own country was proved to be a corrupt politician and is facing prison in a case of grand corruption that I denounced after he violated the independence of the judiciary. Humbly, I accept this award in the name of the Guatemalan judges. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> who honor the robe with ethical behavior. The ones that defend judicial independence, who act with honesty and risk their lives each day and every day in the fight against corruption, to protect the rights of their people. 
It means so much to me to receive this award on the 18th anniversary of the assassination of a personal hero, Colonel Byron Mejia, my uncle, who survived the longest and bloodiest years of the Civil War as he defended the nation against rising communists. Although he was later murdered during a time of peace, he devoted his life to the freedom of his people from the oppression of corruption. To him, I dedicate this award. To my mother, one of the first woman lawyers in Guatemala that promoted women's rights, and as a family judge, always ruled in favor of those most in need. To my father, who has taught me to always speak the truth and to stand up for the values and our principles. To my husband, Eugenio, who shares my dreams and values that is here today, and to my sons and daughters that are also here, many thanks to you. You have all supported me through every step of my career. This recognition commits me to continue working for an independent and impartial judiciary as a tool to fight corruption in my region. So one day, one day my kids can choose to go back to where they belong. I praise God for this honor and pray that my work will always be for his greater glory. Thank you. What strength. God bless you. Um, what a moving experience to hear these tributes from such esteemed members of Congress, all champions of democracy and human rights, and to hear the very touching and sincere and inspiring responses from the five recipients of the 2017 Democracy Award. It's emotionally stirring for all of us, truly. It is because of wonderful examples like our five awardees that I feel certain whatever challenges we face going forward, the work of the NED will continue, just as President Reagan hoped. It is difficult work of strategic importance in today's dangerous world. It is honorable work, even noble. It aims to perpetuate American values of self-government and inalienable human rights for the sake of future generations. I know that Reagan would be immensely proud of these individuals in their brave efforts to combat corruption. He admired bravery as much as he disdained cynicism, which is just an excuse for inaction. All of our honorees chose to take action in spite of risk, in spite of danger, and why, for the sake of their fellow man, we salute you. As I'm about to call on Carl Gershman, the president of the National Endowment for Democracy, to give his observations, I, I just want to take a moment to mention that 15 years ago, we launched a fellowship program at NED to honor President Reagan together with Congressman Dante Fessel whose joint leadership made the vision of a bipartisan U.S. political foundation to promote democracy a reality. That fellowship program has hosted more than 250 fellows from over 90 countries. We welcome scholars, activists, and journalists to Washington to explore new ideas, undertake research, and share best practices. Through the reagan Fassell program, lovers of freedom around the world know that they are supported, and encouraged and admired. And now, let me introduce Carl Gershman. As if anyone here who has ever worked with NED or who is involved in democracy promotion or human rights anywhere in the world, as if anyone who cares about human freedom does not already know who Carl Gershman is. <laughs> Carl has received, he'll try to stop me, but the Order of the Knight's Cross from the government of Poland He's been recognized as a distinguished person for advancing democracy in China. 
He received the International Campaign for Tibet's Light of the Truth Award and Romania's National Order of Faithful Service, he received the Order of Diplomatic Service Medal from the Republic of Korea, the Lithuanian Diplomacy Star, the Leadership and International Relations Award of the Congressional Hispanic Leadership Institute, and the Freedom Award of the Atlantic Council. Um, in short, Carl is a legend. And lucky for us, he's also the hands-on, day-to-day activist president of the National Endowment for Democracy together with Barbara Haig and Bill Leonard and an extraordinarily competent and caring staff, he makes NED the go-to organization for assisting democratic development around the globe and the keeper of the flame for universal human rights. And now, simply, here's Carl. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Thank you so much. And thank you for moderating our event tonight so beautifully. And thank you for providing unifying leadership for the NED board. I also want to thank everyone who contributed to this event. Their names are in the program, the Hereford Foundation, Bob Tuttle, Judy and Gil Shelton, and many, many others who are in the, uh, who are in the program. And I want to give a special shout out. I saw her in the middle there to Sally Blair who has been providing brilliant leadership for our fellowship program. And I want to note that three of the five Democracy Award recipients are former or current Reagan Fussell Fellows. And of course, I'm, Ned is very proud uh, to be the focal point for the commemoration of the 35th anniversary of President Reagan's Westminster Address, which is one of the great statements of the American belief in democratic universalism. Reagan spoke at a, another difficult moment for democracy at the end of what he called a bloody century uh, soon after the American defeat in Vietnam, Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, the declaration of martial law in Poland. Yet he still said that optimism is in order, and he went so far as to proclaim that the march of freedom and democracy would leave Marxism, Leninism on the ash heap of history, and he even predicted the third wave of democratization. It's harder to summon such optimism today. But something that my friend, Congressman Mario Diaz-Ballard, Diaz who was with us earlier and presented the award to Khalil Parsa, said yesterday when all of us met, struck me as telling. He said, he said that because you're there in Afghanistan doing what you're doing, there is hope in the world. And that's just as true about what Rafael has been doing in Angola against extraordinary odds, what Claudia has done and continues to do in Guatemala, the brave stand that Cynthia has taken in Malaysia, and the platform for fighting corruption that Dennis provides in Ukraine. Cynthia said something at our forum this morning that I want to repeat, that this award is not just for her or for Malaysia but for all the whistleblowers and anti-corruption activists, and I would add all the brave fighters for democracy and freedom all over the world. And they are all over the world, everywhere we work in more than 90 countries and beyond. This is something that did not exist when Reagan gave his Westminster address in 1982. But today, these activists have effective and vigorous networks, extensive international support systems, and access to social media that gives them a communications and outreach capacity that is entirely new. And I think it is their influence that is the reason that Larry Diamond calls the democ what, what he calls the democracy recession has not been a depression, and why authoritarian regimes like those in Russia, China, Egypt, and other countries have adopted harsh NGO laws and, and are taking severe measures to repress civil society because they're afraid of such grassroots movements and want to shut them down. That leads to something else that Mario said in our meeting yesterday with Khalil. We know, he said, that you must feel alone, but we want you to know that you have the US Congress and the NED with you and many, many others. As several of the awardees said this morning at our forum, 
We live in a world where the problem of corruption crosses borders through money flows and because people who are prepared to trade their country's future for their own personal enrichment, as Cynthia said, also exist throughout the world and have their own global connections so that corruption is like a virus that can spread everywhere, even to this country. So in addition to the moral imperative for democratic solidarity, there is the imperative of national security and national interest. We will either hang together or hang separately, as was said during our civil rights movement. I want our awardees to know that they are not alone and that they give us hope, even as we try to give them hope. So let us use this occasion to rally our collective spirits, to pledge our continued solidarity, and to ask, as Reagan did in Westminster, what kind of people do we, do we think we are? He was saying that, by the way, quoting Churchill and referencing World War II and what it meant if our enemies underestimate the determination of the democracies and what kind of dangers that can lead to. So the answer is important that he said, let us answer free people worthy of freedom and determined not only to remain so, but to help others gain their freedom as well. That's in the interest of our security and world peace in addition to the interest of human freedom everywhere. Thank you very much for coming tonight. I join, I join Carl in thanking you all very much. Wonderful to see our board members gathered here this evening, Bob Tuttle and Michelle.